morning. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday in Advent. We are glad that each of you are here with us this morning. If you are worshiping with us virtually, we'd ask that you please register your attendance with us by clicking on the link in the comments section of the live stream. This week's Friday Opportunities email had a lot of new information in it, um, including an Advent study, midweek services, alternative giving, and the angel tree information. It's also where you will find information in the coming weeks about the Christmas Eve services. If you're not receiving the weekly email, please contact the church office or see a staff person so that you don't miss important news and information from the church office. You may also sign up to receive the church email on the St. John's website. The Alternative Christmas Giving Program and the Angel Tree are both underway in the lobby area. Please stop by both tables to see how you can share God's generous love and joy with others this Advent season. While you are there, don't forget to pick up Advent devotionals. Our midweek Advent service will take place this Wednesday at noon, followed by lunch for those who are interested. Please see the opportunities email for additional information.
Will you pray with me? Loving God, be to us as a bulldozer of the Spirit. Clear your road in us. Clear a path through the detritus of possessions and obsessions. Thrust aside our divided aims and devious gains. Topple the ramparts of pride and the doubts that derive. Make a highway on which Christ may come and take possession of the whole territory of our being. To the glory of your name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending, the words of which are printed on the insert in your bulletin. You're invited to meditate on them as we continue our worship together.
last week, we lit the first candle of the Advent wreath, candle of the hope. Today, we light the second candle of the Advent wreath, the candle of peace. and Susie Wright for lighting our Advent wreath today. As many of you know, Nelson serves as our church lay leader, and uh, he comes to more meetings than, uh, than he would like to confess, but we appreciate his representation and his time and wisdom and calm. God is the only source of peace calls us to proclaim to the world the coming of Christ's reign of peace, which has no end. Let us heed the call, come in faith, and receive the presence of the one who will make us a dwelling place, a home of peace and reconciliation for the world. How good are we at watching for signs of God's presence in the world, in our lives, in our homes. Advent God, forgive us when we pay more attention to satisfying our own needs than seeking you and your will for our lives, for being more interested in possessing the material things of life rather than your spiritual gifts. Turn our lives around so that we are looking in the right direction towards you. Only then can we hope to recognize the signs of your presence in the world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we have been enriched in every way, in everything we say, and in everything we know. In addition, through God's grace, we do not lack any spiritual gift as we wait with anticipation for Jesus to be revealed. He is the one who will keep us strong to the end so that we shall be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Emily Bell, our Director of Children's Ministries, to come forward with the children for their moments together this morning. relaxed? Are you worried if you're peaceful? No. All right, here. Try something out with me. Take your hands way up high and wiggle them. Get your wiggles up. It's hard to sit here for an hour. I know. Y'all do such a good job, though. All right, now bring them down. And take a deep breath in. Fill your lungs all the way up and let it out. Did that help you feel peaceful? Do you feel relaxed? I feel relaxed. Now, sometimes we can take God and just say, fill me up. Like you just took that air into your lungs. Say, fill me up. Take away my worries. Because God says, do not be afraid. And he can make you feel peaceful. So this week, if you're worried or you're anxious, just take that big, deep breath in. Get that peace inside of you. And just relax. Sound good? All right, let's pray together for peace, okay? All right, you can repeat after me, right? Dear God, fill us with peace and help us to carry that through this week. Amen. Okay, great job, guys. Thanks for coming now. Yes. This morning, we'd like to ask you to pray for the following people uh, today and throughout the coming week. Dudley Librand, who's recovering from double hip replacement surgery. Pat Long, who recently had knee replacement surgery. Beverly Moon and Leela J. Long as they continue their treatments for cancer. We ask that you pray for Laura Fuller, who is mourning the loss of her brother, Johnny Johnson. Please continue to remember Beverly Marks and her family as they grieve the loss of her uncle, Kenneth Johnson. And this morning we celebrate with Meredith and Sam Epps and the birth of their son, Bennett Thomas Epps, who was born on November 29th. Celebrating with Meredith and Sam, our proud grandparents, Jim and Kim Thomas, the rosebud on the altar this morning is in honor of Bennett. Will you pray with me? God, when the time was ripe and the hour had come, you sent your servant John into the wilderness to proclaim the coming of the one true Messiah. Make way, repent, and be baptized, for the salvation of God is at hand. John came to bear witness to the true light, the Messiah, the Son of God, and he told them, Wake up, watch, and wait, for the hour is near when the Son of God will arise. God, on this second Sunday of Advent, we have heard your servant crying out to us in the wilderness. We have heard the call to repentance and restoration, and we want to respond. We have heard that you are offering forgiveness of sins, and we want to hear your mercy spoken over us. We have heard that you are baptizing with water, and with the Holy Spirit, and with fire. Cleanse us, and make us new. We have heard that you are ushering in the reign of peace, and we want to see your kingdom when it comes. God, our sins are many, but your mercy is great. 
Our vision is dim, but your coming is at hand. Our hope is feeble, but your promises stand forever. God, your world stands in need of you. Everywhere we look, we see need of you for your coming, your restoration, your peace, your transformation. On this second Sunday of Advent, we pray for the nations to know your truth and your light. We pray for the poor, the hungry, and the needy. We pray for those who are spiritually hungry and poor in spirit. May they come to know the living water and to drink deeply from your well. We pray for those who face Christmas alone, or sick, or homeless, or destitute. Jesus Christ, light from true light, be a light in the darkness. God, the hour of your coming again draws near. Make us ready in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. Lord Jesus Christ, come to us again this Advent. Come and do not tarry. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. wanted to mention to you before we move forward in our liturgy that in our stewardship emphasis we have received 106 estimates of giving for a total of $598,210.40, almost $600,000. We thank all those who have made commitments and we pray that those who have not will please consider doing so as soon as possible. We are grateful for all your gifts and giving and support. And in that connection, today we are dedicating a beautiful new communion, ta communion table, a gift of the Schillingall family, and we want to now move to this part of our liturgy this morning. Created to the glory of Almighty God and for service in this church. It is presented in loving memory of Mr. and Mrs. Alan S. Porter and Mr. and Mrs. Roy E. Schillingall. We accept this communion table as a sacred trust and will guard and use it reverently in the loving memory of Mr. and Mrs. Porter and Mr. and Mrs. Schillingall. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this community table to the glory of God in loving memory of Mr. and Mrs. Porter and Mr. and Mrs. Schillingall. The memory of the righteous is ever blessed. Let us pray. Most loving God, without you, no word or works of ours have meaning. Accept the gifts of our hands as symbols of our devotion, communion table to your glory, that it may be an enduring witness before all your people, and that our lives may be daily consecrated in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Good morning. It is good to be with you here today. Uh, coming off of a, a good Sabbath rest uh, this past week, it started a little earlier than we anticipated. Uh, Dana woke up last Saturday um, not feeling the greatest. Uh, you know, these days and the day and age we live in, even with a minor cold, uh, things get a little suspect. And uh, so you got to take extra precautions. And so that's what we did. She got tested. And, Spoke with David and we figured it was best to swap around. It all ended up working out good. Uh, so we're, we're glad to be here. She, her test came back neg negative. Uh, she just got a good sign and said, cold. Well, she's come off of it. Uh, but thank you for everybody who's reached out um, over this past week and everything. So it's just a good time to recharge a little bit, albeit starting off not the way uh, we anticipated. So in my notes, I've got a lot of stuff that refers to the uh, first week of Advent. If I hadn't mentioned that, that was an accident. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, it's, this is a sermon that I prepared for last week. But instead of beginning our four-week journey, we're in the midst of our four-week journey uh, of Advent, uh, working up to the manger. Uh, it's the second Sunday, and we're in this season of expectation, of waiting, of anticipation, it's a, a season where we kind of put ourselves in the shoes of the Israelites. We remember what it was like for them to be waiting uh, and anticipating the coming Messiah and uh, waiting for that fulfillment that was on that first Christmas. And now we, the post-resurrection church, we have our own anticipation. Uh, we, we share in Israel's longing for a Messiah where we long for the second coming of Jesus. We wait in anticipation of his second coming. In John uh, 14, verses 1 through 3, listen to what the Lord said, the Lord Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. The two most monumental, monumental moments in history past and history future. We stand in between Jesus' first coming and his second coming. In his first coming, Jesus made atonement for sins by his life, his death, and his resurrection. His first coming inaugurated the coming down of the kingdom of God here on earth. At his second coming, he's going to do away with sin. He's going to do away with death. None of that will be no more. The devil will be defeated as heaven and earth are wedded together. And this is done in a new creation. Are you like me in the midst of everything that's going on and you're sitting there going, Lord, it is time. God, it is time for you to go ahead and make that second coming happen. We look at the havoc that's been created by a global pandemic by cultural, political, racial unrest, and frankly, hostility that just seems to be all around us. And we're saying enough is enough. Lord Jesus, come. Are there any of us that feel that way? In our text today, Isaiah 64, we find the nation of Israel in, in a situation much like that. They're begging for the Messiah to come. Things are, are not... Uh, good at this point in Israel's history. They, they're a divided nation. There's a northern kingdom and there's a southern kingdom. Uh, much like we know of the northern, north and the south in the Civil War. Or if we're honest, what we know today with such strong, clear-cut, dividing lines that are amongst us. And Israel's uh, sitting there uh, kind of like sitting ducks as they're divided and everything's going wrong and they got their uh, eyes and their, their face turned away from God and the Syrians are making their way down to take them over. And so God sends Isaiah the prophet to restore to them what they need to be doing, to get them to turn back to God. And Isaiah is basically pleading with them and he offers up this lament that we have in Isaiah 64 verses 1 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. 
When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness. Those who remember you in your ways, behold, you were angry and we sinned in our sins. We have been a long time. And shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf. And our iniquities like the wind that take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us. And have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O oh Lord. And remember not iniqui iniquity forever. Behold, please look. We are all your people. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. On July 16th, 1969, Neil Armstrong... Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin, take off on Apollo 11. There was, this was uh, the mission to the moon. This was the mission uh, that we would all get to witness. Uh, Neil Armstrong take those famous first steps, and, and we, we hear those famous words as he stepped on to the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But before that step and that leap would happen, and before those words would be spoken, there was a previous attempt on that mission to land the lunar module onto the surface of the moon. As they were making that initial descent, as they were drawing near to the moon, all of a sudden, an alarm starts going off. If you remember Apollo 13 and Tom Hanks, uh, that infamous moment where he says, Houston, we have a problem. The lights are flashing and the alarm's going off. But the problem here was that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had never seen or heard this particular alarm as they were making that initial descent towards Mercury. As a matter of fact, Mission Control in Houston did not know what this alarm was or had never heard this alarm before. It was a 12.02. I, try to put yourself as you're floating around in space in the shoes of Buzz and Neil uh, not Buzz Lightyear, but Buzz Aldrin. Uh, sorry, I, my Hudson came to mind and I just saw Buzz Lightyear. Uh, but try to put yourself in their shoes as they're making that descent and that alarm's going off and nobody knows what it's for. There's a lot of doubt and uncertainty. But after Houston, Mission Control starts going through the procedural manual, they find out that the 1202, the 1202 alarm is letting them know that the lunar module is doing too much. Too much is going on at the same time. And it has to shut down. I feel like this is where Isaiah is as we read this passage. Listen to his first words right out in the bat in verse 1. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Another way of saying that is, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. See, to rend your, your tear garment in ancient Jewish culture, was a sign of a deep despair, of mourning. Of it. it was an outward physical representation of what was taking place. This is a lament, and, and Isaiah draws on this imagery as he's pleading with God to come down to mourn with his people. He's saying, God, look at the chaos in this world. Look at what is happening to your people. We need you to come down here. We need you to heal our pain. We need to see you. We, need, we, we know that you're working behind the scenes. We believe that you're there, but we need to see a physical representation, a physical act of you in our midst. God, we want you to take center stage. Our 1202 alarm is going off. There's too much going on, and we just need you to show up. This was honest. This was authentic. This was Isaiah laying it all out there right before God. He alludes to the ways that God had done it before. He goes, he goes back to Mount Jordan at the Red Sea when, when God showed up on the mountaintop and the people could see the presence of God up there on the mountain. 
He's calling for God to do it again. And given our, our current state of affairs that we're in, I believe we can join along with Isaiah in this lament, in this cry, this begging of the miraculous, this begging of God to do the unimaginable. I've had so many conversations with so many people over the last few months, and the conclusion I've come to is that we're all having 1202 alarms go off in our lives. And the good news and the hope of Advent is that God heard Isaiah and he hears our cry today and he does, in fact, rend the heavens. He does, in fact, tear open the heavens and come down. It's just not in the way that Isaiah or Israel or us, for that matter, expected him to. Now, before we go any further, to be clear, the problems that Israel faced and the problems that we are facing today are a result of the fall. The pandemic, political issues, racial issues, all of these are here because sin has entered the world. Now, what I'm not saying is that these are punishment for God. These are not punishment from God. Rather, they are a byproduct of Genesis 3 and what happened at the fall. Romans 5.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the, face, but the free gift of God is is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. With all that being said, the hope that we cling to, the reality we as believers can rest in, is God did in fact again rend the heavens and come down. And he came down to a manger. He sent the inexhaustible attributes of himself, which were personified in a baby, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. This is not what the Israelites in promise to do when he says, when Isaiah asked him that the mountains might quake. And when we say, come, Lord Jesus, come, we're not expecting that same mode of, of God subtly coming in a manger like he did. Rather, what we're looking for, and maybe a lot of us can resonate with this, when we say, God, rend the heavens, God, tear open the heavens, God, we're saying, rend the heavens and wipe COVID away. God, rend the heavens and fix our government. Rend the heavens and just give me back what I know to be normal. Rend the heavens and fix my marriage. Rend the heavens and put back together my broken family. See, these are feelings we can resonate because some of us have cried them out. They're coming from a place of honesty. There's a longing for God to break through and do the unimaginable. For the Israelites, it was for him to come in and smack the Assyrians out. And for him to heal their land and unify them back together. Instead, they received a baby and a manger. That's what we're working towards this Advent season. But here's the point that makes the manger so monumental, so mind-blowing, so beautiful, and so full of grace. You see, as the manger sits there, there's a shadow that is cast over that manger. And that shadow comes from 30, 33 years down the road and from a Roman cross. I've heard it say that you can't have Easter without Advent or without Christmas. I'm here today to argue that you can't have Christmas and Advent without Easter. The hope we had to carry us through the pain, through the suffering, through these chaotic times, through the brokenness, brokenness is found in the pierced hands and feet of Jesus Christ and the blood that flowed through those. And not only that, but the hope we had that three days later he was resurrected. And with that, we have the promise of his second coming. This isn't, uh, I might do it. This isn't, if you're good, I'll do it. This is a promise that he gives us. We do not live without hope. We live with it. We do not live in fear of death. Jesus has overcome it. We do not do life alone. He has given us his Holy Spirit that walks along with us. And he has given us the birth of the church for us to walk along with as well. Advent offers us what Jesus 
has done and is doing. The fact that Jesus has come and is coming, that is what this season and I hope it isn't just confined to this month for us, but that we live into this reality 365 days a year. That the spirit of Advent, this, this hyper-focus that we give during this time, would captivate us all the time. A couple weeks back, last time I had the opportunity to preach, I, I confess to you my love for this time of year. I, I love Advent. I love Christmas. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were joking in between services about a decoration that I put up in my house. Um, uh, check out my wife's Facebook if you want to see it. It's good. <laughs> but um, I, I love this time of year. One of the things I love the most about it are the hymns, the carols uh, that we sing. And, and I believe, I know they sang it in the first service last week. I believe y'all may have sang it last week. Uh, but my favorite uh, hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I love that song. It, it, I've learned in, in studying it that that's a song that's 1,200 years old. It's kind of cool. It's mind blowing uh, that we're today still singing a song that's 1,200 years old. And the original hymn was seven stanzas long. And at the beginning of each stanza, there's a specific, a specific word. Um, and in English, I'll just read them off to you real quick. There's wisdom, God, root of Jesse, the key of David, day spring. King of Gentiles, and Emmanuel. So that's kind of how this song is structured. Uh, and, and what would happen is monks, uh, back 1,200 years ago, would, seven days out from Christmas, recite each one of these stanzas. They were called antiphons. Now when we take the Latin translation, bear with me for a second. When we take the Latin translation, we lay those out, those, those words out, and we take the first letter, we, we create an acronym. And in that acronym, if we flip it backwards, we get these two words, ero cross, E-R-O-C-R-A-S, which in English means, I'll be there tomorrow. Folks, the good news and the hope of Advent is that we are living in tomorrow, but tomorrow is yet to come. We are living in the finished and completed work of the cross, and we expectantly wait for his promised return to make all things new. The hope of Advent, what we can rest in in these chaotic times, is that Jesus has come, and he is coming again. Rest in that cling to that hope. He comes to walk alongside us. He comes to bring us together as his body, the church, the ecclesia of God, with his son as the head. If you're hurting, rest in those promises and in those truths. I think it's beautiful. And, and you know, I think the Lord for working it out, that, that I get to bring this message today as we do prepare to come to the table, that we come to remember what it is that Christ did for us through his broken body and through his shed blood. Do it as a body of believers, that we come as a, a local expression of the body of Christ to Remember what it is that he has done for us. And we receive that grace as we sit at the foot of the cross. And his grace pours down on us through these elements. And that grace doesn't just haphazardly land on us. It penetrates us and it transforms us on the inside at the heart level. Because we're sitting at the feet of Jesus, which is what a disciple does. They sit at the foot of their teacher to be transformed, to become like their teacher. That's the opportunity that we each have and we each together have before us today. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for your promises. Thank you for the reality that you, you came through the first time, that the script, scriptures give us that you will come again. God, open our hearts and our, our heart's eye to, to the people you would have us to be. God, 
Now, I know there's a lot of scary things going on in the world right now. There's a lot of uncertainty, but you give us certainty in your promises. Let us rest in those. Let us be transformed by your grace as we prepare our hearts and our minds to come to the table. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. At this time, uh, we move into the part of our worship service where we give back to God what He's so richly given us. Uh, if you uh, have brought your offering with us as you make your exit, you can drop it in the offering plate. To give electronically, uh, you can use the, the St. John's UMC Rock Hill app, or you can text St. John's Give to 77977. You, you've heard uh, Pastor David's plea with our stewardship. I, you haven't turned those cards in or made that commitment for 2021, I strongly encourage you to do that uh, today. Um, and also, there are other opportunities to give in a different way uh, that have already been mentioned, but I'll just highlight again. Our angel tree, uh, which is down there, there's still plenty of angels, uh, either physical, uh, actually on the tree, there still are still some virtual, and as well as alternative giving. Um, both of those tables are down in the lobby. I encourage you to stop there uh, as you lead worship today. So I, I encourage you to seek the Lord as you prepare to give. church would live out the mission of making disciples who make disciples for the transformation of the world, and that you would receive all the glory and all the honor. In Christ's name.
for Ryan and I offering the communion prayer, let me give you a few instructions. Uh, after the prayer, uh, we will direct you to remove your cup from the uh, Ziploc bag. And then there are two parts. Uh, you remove the top clear plastic and underneath it is the communion wafer. I warn you, they do not taste like your grandmother's homemade baked bread. So um, uh, bear with us for the best thing you have to everybody. And then after you take that, you will remove the colored uh, top and underneath will be the juice. Um, and uh, when you're finished, then take your empty cup, place it back into the block, and there'll be containers for you as you exit today. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth, all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna and Christ. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna and Christ. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. He showed the people how they had taken your law and distorted it. He has shown the better way that leads back to life. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send empty away. Your own Son came among us as a servant, to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will, and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this. For he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of both bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may now receive your elements. As we remember the body of Christ given and broken and shared for us all. And the blood of Christ given for each of us. Let us pray after receiving. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
rest in the hope and the promise that he has already come and is coming. And when he says, I'll be here tomorrow, that we are in tomorrow and that there is a tomorrow yet to come. That he is a God who keeps his promises and we can hold on to it with hope, love, joy, and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.